Now I'd like to turn it over to Bethany Adams at the National Real Health Resource Center to get us started. Thank you, Keisha, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program Hospital and Clinic Learning Collaborative. Uh, my name is Bethany Adams. I'm Program Director for the Delta Program, and uh, we'd like to welcome you, and we're thrilled that you're able to join uh, today's um, Hospital Learning Collaborative. Uh, these hospital learning collaboratives are interactive, or we like for them to be interactive, and they are virtual meetings, and we meet um, quarterly um, to promote open discussions and um, among the hospital uh, clinic teams to share ideas and successful stories, lessons learned. Uh, we know that the leaders and providers like hearing from other leaders and providers. We all learn best from each other from an open peer-to-peer -peer type forum, and that's what this program is really designed for. Um, as a selected uh, Delta organization, uh, this is your forum to share what works and provide feedback on progress, uh, indicate and share additional needed resources, and um, discuss technical assistance. Again, we'd like for this to be conversational, so feel free to um, unmute your phone and to join um, live. So hit star two when you're ready to ask a question and um, chime right on in. You're also welcome to um, enter your question or um, comment right into the chat box as well. And then also as a reminder, uh, these learning collaboratives really are built on um, IHI's um, Institute for Health um, Improvement uh, model. So we're focusing on performance improvement, development of, you know, a strong output um, for um, a community care coordination plan, strategy map, balance scorecard. Um, really the overall purpose is to continue to assist you as leaders in preparing um, for population health. Uh, so for today's um, health um, hospital learning collaborative, um, we'll discuss um, follow-up uh, conversations from the um, um, summit regarding your strategy map, um, balance scorecard development. Uh, we'll initiate a conversation um, about how to bring in key components of your community care coordination plan into your strategy map, how to think about operationalizing all these recommendations, including key components of your community care coordination plan. Um, and it is very important to note here that uh, the strategy map as we move forward and talk about that um, as your balanced scorecard, this is in addition to uh, your community care coordination plan. It's not in place of that community care coordination plan. So we'll be emphasizing that as well. So all of these are going to be additional tools that we want to um, help you with as we move forward over these, um, this next year, and we want to talk more about that. And I'm sure everyone on the um, call here now uh, knows the center. And just as a reminder um, here is that uh, we really do want to be your resource. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us on a personal level to provide, um, to request more tools, explore issues, uh, discuss your uh, consultation services, or maybe even place something on a wish list. And of course, you know, you have our contact information there, and um, hopefully you got to know us a little bit better while we were at the summit. Of course, you will continue to get to know us while we're out on site with you. And then um, a very special thanks to um, Delta Regional Authority and the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy, um, because they continue to support these activities and being very flexible to support um, specific um, assessments when, when requested and uh, try to tailor the program to meet your needs. And we'd like to recognize them for that. So for now, um, for some brief introductions, let's just have a quick roll call. And um, I'll just go through this list. And uh, if you're a leader um, with your organization, um, just chime in, just uh, say, um, your name and your title and uh, maybe how many um, team members that you have. And just so you know, Keisha has unmuted all of the lines. 
Carol. I was about to say, um, please unmute your, your phone. So that's fantastic. And as a reminder, uh, please mute your computer. Um, your, to mute your computer speakers, you want to look at the top of your screen, and you'll see a little down arrow to mute your speakers. So uh, did, is there anyone here from Pickens County Medical Center today? Yes, this is Vicki. Hi, Vicki. And is Hi, anyone else with you today? Uh, I've got some people are coming in late. It's about three. Okay, fantastic. That's great. That's great. Thank you for hey, joining us. Taylor with Higgins. Great, Taylor. Glad you're on. That's fantastic. Um, is there anyone on from uh, Daughters of Charity today? Yes, Brenda Jacobs and Lisa Goodgame. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Lisa. We're glad you're able to make it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And Chico Memorial, is anyone on the call from Chico? Yes, Stephanie Beerbaum, Lawan Scales, Hi, and Stephanie. David Mann. How Fantastic. are you? Hello, everyone. Great. Hello. Good to hear your voice again. Hey there. Um, so is there anyone on from Delta Memorial today? Hi, Bethany. It's Ashley, and we've got four other people in here as well. Fantastic. Hey there, Delta Memorial team. Glad you're on. Uh, Drew Memorial. Anyone on from Drew? Kathy Haugey from Drew Professional Services, Women's Services. Trisha Scheifer from the Cancer Center. I'm sorry? Timber Davis, Marketing. Fantastic. Jenny Gasper. Hey, Jenny. Glad you're on. No. Hi, Catherine. Anyone Schoen, else? Too. Fantastic. Drew team showed up in force. That's great. Thank you. Um, Nakaches Regional Medical Center. Yeah, I'm Trisha Leia from Nakaches Regional Center. And you're the champion. Thank you. And I think the rest of your team is actually out on a retreat. And um, so we're thrilled that you're able to join today and, and share back the information. So thank you. Iron County Medical Center. Hi, this is Cindy Sadler from Iron County, and there's five of us here on the call today. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Thank you for joining us. Glad you're on. Hello we're to everyone here. there. <laughs> Uh, Pim Scott Memorial. Uh, this, can you hear me? I can. Okay, well, this is Geneva, and uh, and I'm the only one here. I'm on my cell phone. No, you're okay. not. You're not by yourself, Mrs. Mitchell. Ms. Leanne's not on the other line. We're not in the same room. Well, uh, where that's are great. You? Thank you. Thank you, Leah, Donna. I'm Kim Scott, that's great. Um, and what about, sounds like someone's got some um, background, so if you can put yourself on mute. Hello? Keisha went ahead and muted the speakers, and so Bethany, if you could start too to unmute your line. Hi there, can you hear me now? We sure can, thank yep. you. Okay, and I was thinking, I, um, I think the last one, um, uh, did I see if there was anyone from Sharkey? Sharkey is Cena Community Hospital. Does anyone join us today? You can hear yes, star two. Yes, ma'am, this is Becky, and I have two in here with me, and I think Brittany's on the other line. Fantastic. We are oh. thrilled that you're on. Awesome. And I think the last one is Tiffa. Did I miss Tiffa or Iron County? Tiffa's present, Patrick Chapman with two others. 
fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, and did I miss anybody? Okay, well, welcome everyone, and we're thrilled to death you are able to join us. So, um, of course, you know, we're always coming back um, to program purpose and goals, and yes, throughout the uh, Hospital Clinic Learning Collaborative, as well with all the activities, we continue to focus on the program purpose, the goals to really drive um, the planning process, um, services, um, the technical assistance uh, to support you in, in this um, particular program. Um, all services include um, and target uh, these eight program areas uh, and continue to focus on first the priority of concentrating on financial, operational, quality and performance improvement, and then second, uh, the creation of a community care coordination plan and uh, thinking about those strategies to really help you um, prepare for population health for the future. So given all these assessments and completed over this this past year, and then now, uh, many of these um, activities that Kate's going to talk more about here shortly coming up, really the question becomes, how do you manage all this information in a meaningful way? How do you take all the, all the action plans um, from these um, assessments uh, listed here, just to begin with, and then consider the most relevant information and put it into a framework um, so that you have decision-making information um, that makes sense and to really to drive um, strategy planning. And then as part of that, how do you integrate it into um, a plan that makes sense? Um, how do you prioritize that implementation process? Um, how do you get your hands and head around these initiatives so uh, we can operationalize these actions. So we started some of these questions um, in the summit. So we're going to stop here um, for just a moment, because as we discussed in the in summit, um, that we're going to continue to poll you to get feedback and help us target, are we doing our job? So um, the team just um, sent me a message to say, be quiet for a moment, and um, they're going to Take a poll. So, Keisha? Yep, there is one polling question up on the screen. If you could just take a moment um, to select one of those answers. We'll take just a moment. Yep, so the question is, I'm concerning my knowledge about implementing a strategy map in my hospital to guide my work. Um, it's almost even. Somewhat competent, somewhat competent, neutral, some are still pending, most are neutral, and this is um, good feedback for us as a place to start. Um, we want to continue to help you um, think about this, and that's really part of today's discussion. I think that's about it. All right, thank you, okay. Bethany. And is there another one? No, there will be two more polling questions at the end of today's presentation. Okay, and ladies, just uh, chime in and remind us, okay? Okay. So, um, so part of the question was, goodness, how do we put it into um, a framework, all this information coming at us in, in a meaningful way? We started that conversation um, in the um, Summit Strategy Development Workshop. Um, we began to um, think about um, initi initiating the strategy planning process. What is it? Um, we did a... Um, a group exercise um, to begin to um, to start to get our hands on it and, and created a group strategy map and took a, a, a quick and we took a few um, steps toward um, a group exercise with a balanced scorecard and of course we shared some resources and and now we're going to continue to build on that 
And over um, the next um, hospital learning collaboratives in this next year, we're going to continue to help you um, develop that strategy map and a balanced scorecard. Um, um, so, um, yeah, so that's where we left off at the summit. And um, for, for now, we're really going to send the, um, import, send the message of how important this step is. We know that many of the rural hospitals continue to struggle with strategic planning, and um, the strategy map is a useful tool for um, successfully executing a strategic plan. It keeps the strategic plan simple, um, and it really helps you communicate um, your um, organization-wide goals and objectives in a, in a very clear, simple, uh, simple format. So you should have uh, received from Keisha yesterday um, several documents. Um, you should have received your um, individual organizational strategy map um, if you participated in the summit. You should have received um, the group strategy map um, and then a strategy map template and a guide, um, at least a link to the guide here. And um, we will continue to utilize this guide and follow it and step through it. Um, and, and inside this guide, is, it's in a Microsoft Word format. It's easy to use. It has full working examples and templates. It's easily added, and we'll keep coming back to it. And so here's your visual of the um, strategy map template, which is in the guide. It is. Uh, intentionally designed to be easy to be tailored by your organization. You can, uh, it's already pre-filled, you can um, edit out what doesn't fit you or your organization, but for you to know here is that these are pre-filled with key strategies that have been identified from nationally recognized consultants. And uh, it really does focus on value and um, um, includes some key topics for um, thinking about uh, how to best demonstrate value within your organization. And this is, and you should have received, like I said, all of this in an email yesterday, uh, your group summit um, strategy map. And as you can see, that many of your organizational strategies are actually very consistent. The learning and growth common themes included leadership development, uh, training, um, on payment reform and systems, all of which the program has technical systems plans to support to support you with, including upcoming year um, leadership on-site leadership training, uh, assistance technical systems to support you with um, ongoing reimbursement, um, greater understanding of systems, uh, internal processes um, that were common themes that were pulled out included quality, um, department accountability, um, implementation of dashboards. Again, you know, our technical assistance will, will um, target this. Uh, patients, partners, and communities, uh, many of the common themes were improve quality and outreach, educate the public, um, provide available services, uh, align those services with the uh, um, community needs. Alyssa is going to talk more about um, how to pull those key concepts in just a moment um, out to support your um, from your community care coordination plan. Financial uh, perspective, common theme, you know, very consistent. Improve revenue cycle processes. Improve um, cash, cash flow. Yep, we're sending um, on-site consultations, on-site technical assistance to continue to support you um, with these processes over the next year. And most importantly, for right now. Um, we plan to help you with thinking in terms of developing a system approach to planning, um, provide you with some guidance, um, develop a framework um, for achieving um, your goals. And so with that introduction of what we've already done, the tools that we've already provided, and say, giving you a snapshot of where we're going, um, we want to take a moment here and just have Terry talk about um, the importance of system planning and um, strategy um, map development. Terry? Thank you very much, Bethany. 
And you know, we've been doing strategic planning. I've certainly been doing strategic planning for, for more than 20 years. And what we found is that strategic plans come in a variety of different packages. Uh, sometimes they're incredibly complex. Uh, sometimes they're, uh, they're just something that the board and senior leadership looks at. And a lot of times they sit on a shelf. Um, we're really committed to making this something that is going to not only be a living document, but is going to be something that the entire staff understands and knows its role in producing the results that, that are contained within. So we know where we are from a current state. We're trying to keep everything pretty simple here because simple is, is as powerful as it gets in many cases. Uh, we're going to need to do this strategic planning cycle, and that has already begun because we've looked where we are right now. We've already started to, to forge some strategies. For example, we've had our consulting team coming in and looking at our financial processes. So there are financial strategies. Uh, when we look at that vision, we are trying to achieve a, finan a financially stable hospital that's going to be there way into the future. So we're going to have enough money. We're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to have enough margin to support our mission, and that's going to be a part of that vision. Another strategy is we're going to be clinically sound. We are going to provide excellent quality here, great customer service, et cetera, and that becomes part of what, what our vision is for the future as well. We're going to be known as a high-quality provider that can be trusted in the community, patients are going to be satisfied, et cetera. We're also, and this is what's really exciting, I think, to our team and I think so many of you, is we're going to try to keep the whole community healthy. We're going to, the hospital is going to play a major role here in helping to improve the health of our community. And in that regard, we have a healthy community strategy. And our vision is we're going to have, uh, you know, it could be the healthiest hospital, the healthiest community in the country. Uh, we're going to go from high rates of diabetes to manage diabetes, et cetera. Whatever that vision is, the vision should be compelling, and those strategies need to be laid out very carefully and communicated as well. So, you know, basically, uh, we are here. And we're going to start looking at, there's our strategic objectives, pretty much the, the same thing in that previous slide. But we're going to need to start developing measures. We're going to have to have targets as well. So we, we've had our consultants in. We've worked with our community. We're putting up these strategies. And every strategy is going to need to have a target. We know what we're looking for. But then we're going to need to have measures to help us uh, chart our progress along the way. The measures will also tell us if we're not, uh, you know, making good progress moving forward. So this, again, is a living, breathing document, and the strategic plan becomes something that is measurable, and it's also very actionable as well. Now, when you, when you do the research on this, you find that strategies, and this is not just hospitals, but there's a lot of reasons why strategies, we, we come together, we do these wonderful strategic plans, and then it, it just, we just don't achieve what we, we've expected. And this, this basic is one analysis of a huge research study about why that happens. And they're, they're, these folks said there are four basic reasons. First of all, the, the, the employees don't really understand the vision. In this particular research, only about 5% of the employees understood the vision of where the organization was going. So in the hospital, we would re in each of your hospitals, we'd like all the employees to know what you're, what you're standing for, where you're going, et cetera. So vision becomes important. People barrier. Uh, again, a lot of the managers basically don't have any incentives aligned with the strategies. In fact, in many cases, a lot of hospitals, managers don't know what the strategies are. So it, it's not surprising that we would have some people barriers here uh, as well. So we've got to get that down to our managers and get them involved and feel they have ownership in here. 
Another barrier is resources, is that we put a strategic plan or we put a strategies in place, and then we, we don't basically give the kind of um, budgets and funding that, that, that are needed. And that's one of the great things about this program is that we're, we're bringing in some outside resources to, to help make sure uh, that, 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 this, that these strategies are supported. And then finally, the management uh, barrier. And as this, as this says, about 85% 80 of executive teams spend less than one hour per month discussing strategies. If we don't put it on the agenda, we're constantly fighting fires and we're not giving enough time to the strategies. So it's no wonder at the end of the year when we do a look at ourselves, we find we just haven't achieved the results that we were seeking. So, and again, that's 70% of CEO failures are being uh, attributed to failure to, to execute strategy. So what we're, what we're introducing here are a couple of different tools that we have used here at our National Rural Health Resource Center for at least a decade, if not longer. And the strategy map is basically sets out this blueprint for success. On one page, it says, here's how we're going to execute our strategic planning. It is, it is meant to communicate the objectives so that everybody understands it, our managers, our leadership team, our boards, and even our staff and our medical staff. Um, it graphically depicts the organization strategies. So we're, we, we see uh, something that is, is flowing in, in one direction or the other, and it talks. Uh, it also talks about how the strategies relate to one another. Uh, Bethany talked about systems, and systems are nothing more than a group of strategies all designed to achieve uh, outcomes and objectives. It, it frames the organization's strategic plan into a roadmap map. So if you, you, you will have a strategy map that basically will reflect what your strategic plan is talking about. And it also directs the balanced scorecard and its actions to operationalize the strategies. So we're actually going to carry these out. There's going to, in our strategies, uh, we'll have folks that are assigned the responsibilities, et cetera. It clarifies how we're going to do this, and it communicates this to everyone. So I, uh, the next learning collaborative, is this, is this still mine, Bethany? I can't oh yes, please. Yep. I'll, okay. I'll sum it up. We're going to continue. <laughs> yep. We're going to continue to develop the strategy map. Uh, we're going to follow up and discuss systems planning to continue to operationalize strategies. Uh, we we have done this before on previous occasions with collaboratives of hospitals, and it, and our, our initial results have been uh, have been very encouraging. And so we're we're hoping you folks will embrace this as enthusiastically as our last group, as well. And then we're going to integrate the data in and then information from the assessments and help you integrate that into your balanced scorecard and your strategy map. So we're here to help. Uh, we don't expect you to understand all this stuff right up front, but we do expect that uh, working together we're going to come something with, with some real value here. And in the future, uh, in some of these collaboratives, we're going to help you develop these balanced scorecards and kind of do anything we can to, to give you a hand here. Thank and you, I'm Terry. kind of a coach and your I... guidance on this. Let me just finish with that. That's my that's my contact information, and I do welcome you to give me a call if you're struggling with this or you just want to talk about it. Just call me anytime. I'm I'm happy to to talk to you. Bethany. Yes, thank you very much, Terry. And um, I I was hoping to share as well with the, with the hospital teams that on this hospital. Um, Clinic Learning Collaborative, so far we're sharing more with you. But moving forward, and as we um, start um, working together on these strategies map, you know, we're going to ha hear more from the team. So please um, uh, think about how you can have your um, draft um, strategy map in hand um, while you're working together in your team, um, while you're thinking about um, various discussions with the, the program, consultation services, your action plans, while you're evaluating, you know, how is this really making a difference in your hospital operations, um, have it in hand 
and we like for you to start sharing and uh, really driving the conversations uh, moving forward in the future um, learning collaboratives so that you can hear from each other and not us. And then lastly, uh, Terry, um, Terry is available. Terry is nationally uh, recognized. So um, he does uh, leadership coaching. He can do that on-site um, or um, virtually. He can be on-site if you want assistance with um, strategy planning um, or board development. Um, just uh, even virtually um, helping you one-on-one uh, -on -one with your um, strategy map and balance scorecard. So um, he's a great resource. Um, please, um, please reach out. And again, this is the link so to the um, um, resources that we've already shared out. Uh, I have them just here as a, a reference as well. Um, and now we're going to turn it over to Alyssa. Um, She's going to talk about um, how to consider the um, key components of a community care coordination and how to think about um, pulling it in, uh, into your strategy map. Alyssa? Thanks, Bethany. Yeah, as Bethany mentioned, I, I just wanted to take a moment or two today to, to continue the discussion or, or even begin with some of you the discussion how the community care coordination planning we completed this summer ties in and supports the objectives you are identifying for, with each of your organization's strategies. It's important when you're building your strategy map to incorporate and understand the work that you are doing and completing with your community joint partners throughout your planning is essential for your organization and, and your community's success. This, this is the strategy map that you guys created um, during the summit in September. And, and today I'm going to use it as, as a crosswalk. Um, I'm going to provide an example in each quadrant to an actual community strategic objective that was identified and described during the on-site community care events this summer. Please note that the examples I'm sharing may not be the ones identified by that organization at their event, um, when I crosswalk it to, to the objectives here before you, um, nor was I in the balanced scorecard workshop at the summit and may have the um, intent wrong that, that you have before you as well too. But really this is an exercise to show how um, the support and the connection between um, your organizational successes that you're identifying in your strategy, your strategic planning, and the planning that you're working on engaging your community partners in is so important um, and they need to work together. Thank you, Keisha. Momentary issues, um, user issues there. So in the learning and growth quadrant, um, there were um, many community strategic objectives um, that uh, talked about implement better communication. And so as you see, um, during the workshop on, in September, a strategy was identified as engaged department managers in business discussion. And so as a, the strategic objective from the community that, that I pulled forward here was, yes, to incorporate um, communication patterns workflows with your community joint partners and other providers. However, this particular organization had an initiative um, to, well, before we can join and connect our partners, we need to break down and figure out better communication within and engage people within our organization first to improve communication before we can um, expect to do that um, with our community partners as well. In the internal in the internal processes section or quadrant, um, there were, as you can see here, improved quality reporting and accountability was um, an, an organization's goal or community strategic objective. And, and I'm sure that is with many of your organizations at an organizational level. Almost all of our community planning events, we had either, we had a strategic objective that was around coordinating care. Um, a lot of them had initiatives upon discharge specifically. As you know, um, in order to improve quality um, reporting or, or facilitation, you need to help identify and create that coordination, those workflows, not only the handoff, but how are you going to communicate better um, throughout the cycle through that continuum of care upon discharge and throughout patient care that will then in turn help improve some of the quality metrics that you're reporting as well. 
part, patients, partners, and community. You know, when I was thinking through this quadrant here, um, you know, at first I think people think that many of the objectives identified at the community on-site events would fall into this category. And I hope, you know, through our, through our, um, my providing some of these examples, it's kind of helping you think through all of these quadrants. Um, so, so, so the one that I wanted to call out here in this section that, that came out um, that, would, that is going to help support improved outcomes and quality of health for your community was one that, that came out in different, worded in different ways, but across many of the community planning events, we want to provide understandable prevention and management education. And, and why this is important is as we've worked um, in pr providing and sharing the community health st um, status reports with the community champions in each of your teams, we, we talked, and actually many of the community champions shared at, at the lear each community on-site learning event that some of the um, access issues or, or barriers to care is um, um, low um, uh, high school graduation rates and in turn um, education levels and um, reading rates or, or we shared some information in regards to what is health literacy rates across the nation as well. And so in order to help improve the quality of care and outcomes, we need to make sure that our patients, our, the members of our community, understand the care that they are being provided and what they need to do as they leave your organization. And so many objectives and then in, um, were created at the community level with your partners around providing understandable um, information. And also some additional trainings of how are we going to ensure that they understand so that they can better engage in their care at, um, post discharge, um, such um, techniques as um, teach back um, um, that nursing are using or, or your discharge coordinators are using as, as folks are getting discharged from the hospital as well. So the last quadrant um, the finance, oops, I'm going to go back here, the financial quadrant, the, the, um, I see a great alignment in improved revenue cycle management. And, and believe it or not, this, this came up in many of the community planning events as well, too. Maybe not using those terms, however, but some of the, the objectives um, that, that were provided were the one that, that we have on the screen in front of you was create and highlight available resources. Now, this doesn't look like a cross um, uh, across agreement or, or that it coincides with the revenue cycle management, but the initiative underneath this objective was let's share, let's, let's assist, or let's provide the information that we can assist help completing financial paperwork. And, and that can go, you know, one of two ways. Many, some of the programs, some of the hospitals have charity care programs, so determining eligibility for them. Also, some um, have financial, I'll call navigators, that help Determine, do some screening to see if, if folks are eligible for the, Medic the state Medicaid program or other health insurance options um, up front. So as, as you guys know, as, as if you provide more coverage or if your patient population has more insurance coverage, it can help decrease that private pay or uninsured rate, helping you get additional revenue through that door. The other, the other um, um, community strategic objective that came to light, and I, I didn't highlight it here, but um, was remove administrative barriers. So in one community, um, it, it, a lot of discussion was around that the only Affordable Care Act insurance plan in that county, the hospital didn't accept it. And so if you're the, the number one provider of care in that community and you're not accepting the one um, insurance plan, and this isn't commercial or anything like that, that can provide an administrative barrier for people in your community to seek more planned coverage at your hospital. So opening discussions around that as well. So these are just quick examples how the work each of your organizations did this summer through your community care planning events with your hospital teams and your community joint partners will really support and help build upon the work you're doing within your organization as you continue to develop and the initiatives and um, implement those priority areas that, that you are determining for your strategy map. And I'm going to hand it over to Kate here to, to start talking about our year two activities. Thank you, Alyssa. Hello, everybody. This is Kate Stenyam. I know some of you saw these uh, charts 
at the summit in September, and some of you did not. They are also posted on our website. I know it can be a wee bit daunting looking at everything we have scheduled out for the upcoming year, but um, we're all in this together. We're just going to take it one day at a time. So as you can see right now, that first bar, you know, is the revenue cycle management, physician practice management, on-site consultation, which many of you have uh, heard from Keisha already and have that scheduled, or, if, or some of you have already uh, up and started it and are well on the way. Those of you who did not do um, the financial operational assessment and quality improvement assessment with Stroudwater this past year, you will be scheduled for that this uh, coming year. Underneath that, you'll see the uh, implementation to support the revenue cycle management and physician practice management, as well as the FOA or QI, and that will be ongoing throughout this year. And then we also have some newer pieces that will be coming up, um, including workforce development, telehealth, and EMS. So just a little bit of an overview for those things, particularly the telehealth one, because that one will be starting before the, uh, before the other pieces. We're in the final processes right now of uh, finishing the contract with the University of Arkansas to help us with the telehealth assessment. And so starting in November, um, we'll be reaching out. Keisha, you'll be hearing from Keisha to schedule some time to, for them to come on site and do a telehealth assessment with you. And then after that, we'll be really looking for, um, or they'll be providing some subject matter expertise to review findings and the recommendations, and as well as moving in uh, next spring, more likely to the implementation um, of the telehealth pieces after that. For the EMS, that um, will be really kind of kicking that off starting in January of 2019. So we'll look forward to that. I won't give you a ton of detail on that, but that'll be in January really starting to look at initiating the EMS assessment, planning and project development. And then the workforce piece, um, we already have that baseline assessment information that is obtained really from the staffing analysis and primary care analysis, which comes out of financial operational assessment. And um, so gathering some of that data, but then we'll be moving forward as we go through the year to initiate recommendations of workforce development assessment and engage in that one-on-one -on -one coaching with subject matter experts. You can see on here we have also just included the Hustler Clinic Learning Collaboratives. Those will be still held quarterly. And then again next September we will be hosting another summit, a time for all of us to get together in person. This is a year two activity for the uh, community champion activities as well as the community care coordination. The thing I want to focus on here is that you see in the second quarter and then as well closer to the fourth quarter, that's when the on-site consultations will be taking, taking place on-site for the community care coordination planning. And coming up real quick, you'll get some invitations from Keisha to set up some one-on-one -on -one calls, uh, particularly with the CEO. And during that time, both Alyssa and Bethany will be working with, uh, working with you to prioritize your areas and activities for this community care coordination planning going forward. And depending on the priority areas, it will be either our staff or a subject matter export or a combination of both that will be coming on site. So they'll be working with you in the next coming months to really identify and prioritize those areas. And now I'm going to turn things over to another one of our team members, uh, Selena. Selena, please press pound two to unmute your line. <laughs> oh gosh, um, star two, please. My, I apologize. Okay, is that better? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Sorry about that. So as Kate mentioned, in year, year two activities will include an opportunity to focus on some workforce development. And so in preparation of this project goal, um, starting, well, last August, we began scheduling planning calls with all of the organizations to provide an overview of the employee satisfaction assessment project. Of those 10 organizations, eight have completed their ESAs, 
and one organization is in the process of assessing employees. The survey contained 48 questions, um, 44 of them were short answer style, and it assessed employees' satisfaction with the hospital as an organization, um, taking a look into department culture, leadership, and environment, focusing on some onboarding and growth satisfaction, um, for example, with learning new skills to improve job performance, and finally, salary and benefits. The CEOs were given an opportunity to customize the survey by adding an additional five questions, um, maybe focusing on specific areas. For example, one hospital um, implemented a new payroll system. Another hospital wanted to assess their employee satisfaction with a new EMR system. Um, outside of that, we did want to make sure the original 48 questions were standard as we want to look at some comparative analysis in the future across all 10 organizations. So this slide here just provides a overview of the project timeline showing the hospitals that participated um, and their start and stop dates. You'll notice that Natchitoches, although they're not currently performing the ESA with the center, they do one with Press Ganey, and so there may be a potential opportunity for them to share best practices. So as Bethany mentioned earlier, in the um, Learning Collaborative, that it's going to be opportunities for you guys to share. We want to hear more from you. Um, just to give you an example, the response rates for the ones that have completed the assessments vary from 31% to 100%. And I say feedback is good. So even if there was low feedback, it's a good platform to look forward to change. The average through the eight completed assessments was 79%. And so what are the next steps? Once the surveys have closed, we will begin collating the findings and we'll provide a written report to the hospital's clinic CEOs. Um, I do stress that because the information is confidential and it's sensitive. So once CEOs have had a time to review the report, maybe even discuss it or share it with their management team, there is an opportunity for a center subject matter expert to provide a webinar presentation, maybe focusing on certain areas from the report so we can determine how best to assist you all in year two. Um, in addition to year two activities in support of the employee satisfaction assessments, we will offer some virtual coaching with workforce development and possibly on-site leadership development training, as previously mentioned earlier in the call. Um, we do want to encourage that the information or the feedback received from the employee satisfaction assessments is um, used to, will help to establish a benchmark for future reference as you begin building your strategy map and your plan, um, specifically supporting areas of learning and growth in patients, partners, and community. And I'll turn it over to Keisha. All right, thank you, Selena. Um, so our next Hospital Clinic Learning Collaborative will take place this coming February. So stay tuned for um, a date for that and also a calendar invitation to share with your hospital team. Um, I will now share, or I will now turn this over to Bethany uh, to address any questions and comments. Uh, thank you, ladies. Um, I'd like to add one more comment. Um, um, to, to Keisha's uh, presentation. Keisha, you did a great job um, summarizing that, and um, um, I believe that you are in process of actually um, completing the report, and um, we hope to have the report um, sent out to the um, CEOs, hopefully in the next um, week or two, hopefully, correct? Oh, Selena, not Keisha. So, um, okay, so I believe that's correct. I think she's back on mute. And um, so we will take a moment and do a polling here. Keisha?
<laughs> All right, so there are two polling questions now on the screen. If you could take a moment uh, just to answer those. The first one says, concerning my knowledge about implementing a strategy map in my hospital to guide my work, I am, with multiple choice answer. Our second polling question is, the hospital clinic learning collaborative content was helpful to me in preparing for next steps. Please take a moment to answer both of those questions. It does look like so far, um, compared to the pre, looks like um, confidence level is increased. So um, that's good news. That helps us uh, think about, are we on the right track? Are we saying the right thing um, to make this meaningful and helpful? So that is um, great information. And it still looks like, I believe it's, um, completed. So it looks like now over 60%, over 50% um, feel um, somewhat confident, and that's uh, definitely an increase. So fantastic. Thank you for your feedback. That helps us gauge. Next. Thank you, Bethany. This is Alyssa, and I think we'd like to just open um, the, this next um, we have about seven or so minutes remaining in our time together today and, and would like to open to you guys. Our, um, through, uh, do you have any questions or, or, or comments about the information you've provided or as um, since you've left the summit on, on different areas that you may have worked through or are working on? Again, you can hit star two to unmute your line or use the chat box in, on the left-hand side in the middle of the screen to communicate your questions or comments that way. Now, don't everyone all speak at once. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to come on in. Yeah. We can so. unmute both, too, to see if that helps. Or um. uh, Yes. Uh, as a reminder, hit star 2 to unmute your phone. And while you are thinking about your questions if you ha or comments, we want to hear your comments as well, um, please know for... This time, yes, we did all the talking because we were sharing and, and uh, preparing for next steps. Next time, we want you to share. So please come with your strategy map, your successes. Be ready to share out with others, with your peers, so that your peers here on this forum can learn from you. Come prepared um, to call out your questions uh, out to the forum so and ask them for assistance. Um, we will be... Um, really wanting to work with you um, and um, see um, see your strategy map um, and, and how is it how is it going any questions no comments every cricket well next mm -hmm. time won't be cricket <laughs> um, and, and so we will be and, and, yeah and, and this is Alyssa and we like to um, gently call on people too during our learning collaborative going forward so just no, <laughs> in, in a positive, supportive type way. Um, well, thank you so much, then, to everyone today for taking time out to um, join us. We hope this was helpful. And um, as always, uh, you have our contact information. Feel free to um, contact any of us at all, any time.